So let's take a look at the following example in which we're going to analyze and determine the final products formed in a thermal electrocyclic reaction of this given molecule. So we have a molecule that contains one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight carbon atoms. We have to the first carbon atom and the last carbon atom, we have these hydrocarbon R groups. And we also have one, two, three, four pi bonds. Now we know that the reaction is under thermal conditions, so the energy source is heat. So we basically want to determine what the product that is formed, what the isomer is. Is it trans or is it cis with respect to these two molecules, with these two R groups here. Now the aeroformulism for the rearrangement is as follows. This basically breaks off and goes here. This breaks off and goes here. This forms a pi bond here, forms a pi bond here, and a final molecule that we form under our temperature conditions is as follows. So we have a bond here, 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 pi bond, and we don't know in which direction these R groups basically point. That's what we want to determine. Now, notice that we have this carbon atom and this carbon atom whose orbitals basically have to uh, change degree measures. They have to uh, orient in a special way to actually overlap. The question is, how exactly will this overlap take place to form this bond, sigma bond, between this first carbon and the eighth carbon? Now, the way we're going to solve it is uh, by recalling what we discussed in the previous lecture. So, we summarized uh, the following result. So, we said that if we are under thermal conditions and we have, if we have 4n uh, pi electrons, then our rotation is con-rotatory. If, however, we have 4n plus 2 electrons in the pi system, rotation is uh, dis-rotatory. So con-rotatory means the two orbitals of the first and last carbon rotate in the same direction to form the actual bond. And this rotatory means the two orbitals of the first and last carbon rotate in opposite directions to basically form this sigma bond. The question is, which rotation is actually observed? Well, let's count how many pi electrons we have. By the way, n is basically a number that can be 0, 1, 2, 3, and so forth. So this corresponds to 0, 4, 8, 12, and so forth. This corresponds to 2, 6, 10, 14, and so forth. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 multiplied by 2, so 8 pi electrons, and that fits this criterion. And so, because we are on the thermal conditions and we have 8 electrons, our motion is con-rotatory, so they rotate in the same exact direction. So, let's draw this molecule right here. So we have the molecule which looks something like this. And we have our two orbitals. Now the highest occupied molecular orbital on the thermal conditions contains a negative region on the top pointing uh, uh, to the top on the first carbon and a negative region low pointing downward. The positive here basically points downward, the positive here points um, upward. Uh, if you're not certain about where to get this, simply work out all the pi uh, molecular orbitals of this particular molecule by combining our A2P orbitals of our carbon. So basically we have an R group pointing this way, let's call it R, uh, so let's say this is R2. And this points this way, let's call this R1. So because our rotation is con-rotatory, they rotate in the same direction. So let's say they rotate clockwise. If they rotate clockwise, both of these orbitals have to rotate clockwise. And so when they actually rotate, we form the following molecule. 
So basically the blue regions, the negative regions will overlap and we produce this sigma bond and our green regions will become much smaller and will point in the opposite direction. So basically we have a molecule that looks something like this. Now when this rotation takes place, the R group, because it rotates this way, the R2 group will point out of the board and our R1 group, when it rotates down, this will point downward. And so the molecule, the final molecule, looks something like this. So we see that under thermal conditions, when this reaction take, uh, takes place, basically we have a trans isomer because these two R groups point in the opposite direction.